From the moment we first encounter a screen, we are hooked. And with that, most of our experiences are now governed by a three-act structure. Put simply, the three-act structure simply means beginning, middle and end. You're born, you live, you die. Many call it the setup, the elaboration and resolution. The first act sets the stage, introduces the problem, the world of the characters. The second act is usually the longest where things develop and there may be twists and turns and we see the main tensions and confrontations deepen. The third act requires some sort of resolution. And these are the building blocks of narrative that occurs in, fil in film, but also in novels, jokes, cartoons, the news, and just about every film and TV drama works according to this structure. It is the Hollywood credo. So do advertisements. There are numerous books written about it, and it's all fine as long as we accept it is a device and not how reality works. So it's a useful tool, but it nevertheless limits our perceptions and understanding to an astonishing level once it creeps into everyday life. And it makes us easy to control. It affects the way we see the world, the way we make judgments, view relationships, and the very way we think. It's ingrained into our DNA by now, our consciousness, even if we don't know it. This video has a three act structure. I introduce the subject, elaborate upon it, and then draw a few conclusions. And as I shall su suggest, it, it is used to weaken us and diminish our humanity. Most people, and not just in the Western world, spend an inordinate amount of time watching screens. TV, cinema, tablet, laptop, mostly phone. Sitting, standing, walking, the phone is like an extra limb. And the three-act structure is repeated in nearly all of this activity, so our exposure to it is phenomenal. It has changed humanity. Most people can only now view all aspects of life through this structure. If you take the financial crisis of 2008, Act One had the triggering incident of share prices falling, currencies devaluing, the whole empire of money appearing to crumble. Act Two, detailed stories of savings, loss, careers, ruin, tragic consequences, and a series of dramatic questions. How long will it last? Will there be a recovery? Most importantly, who is to blame? And the third act involved a, a sense of recovery, a tentative return to normality, and a few people were vilified. Many saw it as a Faustian pact between bankers and the devil. The Faust story also has a three-act structure. The need to blame someone is also part of the three-act structure because it requires heroes and villains, goodies and baddies. The imposition of this structure obfuscates the truth of the financial world. But fundamentally, it's the whole financial infrastructure, the deep structure that is flawed and that, in that sense, tens of thousands might be to blame, some, know, some knowingly and some unknowingly. There are certainly a lot of bankers in the world. It was a systemic failure, with no definable moment of inception and no real end in that the effects cast a long shadow. And this is the point. Much of life doesn't fit neatly into categories. It doesn't always have a simple three-act structure or easily identifiable goodies and baddies. It's messy and unstructured, and we must navigate our way through it at each twist and turn. And our ability to do this helps us mature and develop and survive. If we try to reduce everything to a Hollywood movie structure, we're in deep trouble, because reality will constantly frustrate and ridicule us. We will expect a three-act structure where none exists. We will lose our way. And if you're lost, there may be dozens of options and possible choices, but we're so used to the movie structure where choices are limited, usually to the right way and the wrong way. We want neat beginnings, middles and ends that tidy everything and resolve it. We might get annoyed when the three-act structure doesn't work, but mostly it can't work because it is not real life. Marriages fail, businesses go wrong, friendships crack, ambitions are thwarted, how dare they not live up to the narrative of three acts? People try to make uh, Brexit a three act drama. There was the first act, the set up, the referendum. Then there was a dramatic surprise and an inciting incident. People voted to leave. Shock, horror. Then the long winding twist and turns second act where the establishment and mainstream culture 
did everything it could to create 17.4 million people as villains or village idiots, clowns or fools, and themselves as heroes who will save the nation by staying in the EU. And the long will we, won't we leave, then the, the rising climax of D-Day or B-Day last March approaches, but it's a false ending. We didn't leave. Surprise, surprise. I never thought we would. So now there's a new extended second act. May resigns, Boris promises, Boris fails, will we, won't we? And then there will be some sort of third act where something happens and the whole pantomime is done with. Or is it? Will there be a follow up? Brexit too. Just when you thought it was safe to go out, the return of Brexit. Or maybe Brexit 3, Brexit 4, son of Brexit, why not? The whole Brexit saga is reported and commented on as if it is a drama that should fit ne neatly into three acts, and it didn't. Those involved were too dumb, too corrupt, or even too silly to adhere to a simple three-act structure. But what it does show that is uh, how public life is governed by rules of theatre rather than of competence. We are treated like theatre puppets by people who are themselves puppets. The string pullers keep well away from the action, but are, even as I record this, rubbing their hands in glee at the chaos, absurdity, comedy and tragedy that they have helped to create and the profit they will make from it. Brexit is a synecdoche or symbol for much of modern life, which is increasingly ruled by TV and Hollywood thinking. We impose this structure on relationships. Boy meets girl, falls in love. In the second act, it gets complicated, but then it ends in marriage and happy ever after, or they part, and it's a tragedy. People seek happy ever afters. They want the three acts to fit life perfectly and vice versa. But life can be muddled, full of highs and lows, separations, joys and failures. Relationships can in endure or slowly peter out over months or years or decades or a lifetime. They can be complex things that require effort management and acceptance of change. The three-act structure doesn't equip us for this. Nothing does except an adaptable ability to learn and adjust from experience. In public life, wars are often started to supposedly rid the world of evil tyrants, which is part of the movie mentality. The situation is identified, the good guys go in and sort it out, the bad guys are killed, and the people are saved. Three acts, and of course, it's nonsense. Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, now Syria. Surely we should have learned that we are being duped into accepting a Hollywood version of the world. There's no point in talking about three acts to someone whose country has just been destroyed and family murdered. They've run out of acts, except perhaps for revenge. The mantra of Tony Blair's circle was, we need a narrative. By that, they meant a version of events that could be easily packaged into three acts. The electorate, it was felt, were more likely to listen if facts and rational argument were sacrificed on the altar of a three-act movie which could appeal directly to simple emotion. Blair sent Bush a series of extraordinary private notes in which he refers to destroying the axis of evil and referring to the invasion of Iraq, says, I will be with you, whatever. These are badly written lines, atrocious dialogue from movies. Speaking of Osama bin Laden, Bush saw the whole world as a cowboy movie, saying, and there's an old poster out west, I recall, that says, wanted, dead or alive. Psychologically, people are reduced to popcorn stereotypes. Political advisor Dan Daniel uh, Finkelstein a former advisor to William Hague says that reading a book aimed at screenwriters and documentary makers dramatically changed his approach to politics. The three act structure, simple characters and a story arc were the best political tools, he said, for persuading people into believing something and for gaining their support. It's a way of controlling people's perceptions. And when you do that, you control their thoughts, their speech and their actions. Related to this idea of narratives that control us is an essay by French critic Roland Barthes about a murder trial. Gaston Dominici was an 80-year-old French peasant arrested for the murder of people camping illegally on his land. He was illiterate. He was baffled by the world of the court, by the language used and the way he was represented. 
No one ever knew what really happened. Perhaps he was attacked first, but he was found guilty. And Barth says that what we see in the trial is a novel at work or a dramatic structure, a story made up by the highly educated and literate lawyers and judges and journalists who psychologized Dominici as if he was a character in a drama. But that this drama and this characterization had nothing to do with the reality of an elderly Provençal peasant who had never read a book or been introduced to the same simple psychological grid used by the law. So the law depended on its own fiction of what people are in order to condemn them. So stories can be dangerous. Part of this pattern of control in the three act structure is the idea of closure. That the third act brings about a satisfying ending where everything's neatly wrapped up. Got a messy divorce, oh, you need closure. Personal or family tragedy, you need closure. This is an elastoplast remedy, often doomed to failure. Some years ago, I had my leg badly broken. It was a deliberate act on a football pitch. My leg healed, but uh, I now have some arthritis where it broke and it aches sometimes and occasionally swells if I sit, sit on it for too long. I'm also still angry at the man who did it, if I bother to think about it, though less angry than I was. So I've never had closure in the sense that the leg healed perfectly or I forgot all about it. Like many things in life, you adjust and realign, you live with it, you manage, you change your relationship with the thing, you alter your perspective, but you never have closure. It's always ongoing and the three act structure doesn't allow for that. So finally, all this is reductive. We adopt a limited, simplistic view of the world and of people that it ignores unexciting but important facts that becomes lazy in attending to difficult and convoluted arguments, that substitutes popcorn culture for reality. Politicians, military advisors, popular culture, movies, TV, mainstream media, and, and uh, the controlling elites who wish to manipulate us readily employ the three act structure as a means not of explaining reality, but of creating it and making us live it. This is, I suggest, at least in part, a deliberate ploy to simplify us, to, to truncate our perceptions, limit our ability to see and interpret, so that finally we are cognitively incapable of thinking outside the box. Our brains will insist on simple beginnings, middles and ends, and we will be little more than puppets waiting for our strings to be pulled.